Uh, hey everyone, you're listening to Void Rivals Rundown number three. I am Jesse. I'm joined by TFG1 Mike. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, we're still doing this. This is the third uh, rundown of, of the comic here. I, we still don't have a name for this thing yet. Well, yeah, for your lovely YouTube channel here, <laughs> we, we don't, but I'm just putting it as an episode of the pullback after the fact. Uh, and the thing is, is that I don't remember seeing whether this is a full ongoing, a five issue minis. I, I, I don't remember between the last time we recorded and now. And yeah, we are continuing on with Void Rivals number three three like you said for anyone who doesn't know who's been living under a rock written by robert kirkman art is done by lorenzo de felici uh the colorist is matt matthias lopez and the letterer is russ wooten yeah so as you were as you were saying that this is an ongoing comic series okay which kind of as we get to the end of the the synopsis here i got a question about the ending of this comic so <laughs> okay all right. So uh, again, this is Void Rivals number three. I'm going to do a quick synopsis here. Uh, the first one here comes from imagecomics.com. So it says Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo de Felici's new shared universe debuts a monstrous new villain. Fighting for their lives to return to the sacred ring, Derek and Salula face a new threat, capture. And they're not the only prisoners on this ship. So a uh, quick rundown here from uh, my notes. So Derek and Salula pick up the fight with the Skuxoid from the last issue. Uh, so if you didn't read number two, Go back, read number two. You can listen to our breakdown of that uh, here on my video uh, or up on uh, geekcastradio.com. Uh, from there, Derek is taken down by the Skuxoid, who in turn is taken down by Salila, who appears to be a really skilled fighter, not just a pilot. Uh, the two escape the Skuxoid and run through the ship looking for a place to hide. They stumble upon a room with a giant robotic scorpion they have to fight. Salila holds her own fighting it while, the, while uh, she lures it into a mechanical door, which Derek is able to smash it with. Afterward, yep. they hear a voice from a nearby prisoner cell. Uh, turns out to be a Quintesson Executioner. Uh, the Quintesson quickly tries to befriend the two as they rush to try to escape using the Quintesson ship. When they reach the ship, they are met by the Skuxoid, who explains that the Quintesson can't be trusted. Upon further research, the Skuxoid has learned that Derek and Salila are not enemies after all. Uh, so Derek and Salila are able to make a deal with the Skuxoid, giving them a ship, and then leaving the Quintesson there with the Skuxoid. Uh, after a few days on the ship as they near the Sacred Ring, Salila seemingly turns on Derek, leaving us with our issue three cliffhanger. So where do you want to start? I I guess we can start with the Quintesson because you had questions all about the Quintessons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so going back to the, the Transformers, Transformers the movie, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they call essentially all those beings that we see uh, when Hot Rod and Cup are kind of captured. They all they're all referred to as the Quintessons. Mm -hmm. Um and quint right means five right and really all we see there is one character who has the five faces um but every again everyone's referred to as a quintesson so we did a right. little research uh before this uh, you sent me some notes i was able to find some notes as well um the the character we're introduced here within the comic on um, that we also see in the movie is referred to as the quintesson executioner actually it's, is it the executioner or the prosecutor uh are they wrong as a prosecutor yeah the executioners are the yeah, that doesn't look like. Let me oh, look you're at right. The you're right. Yeah, sorry. Okay. The Quintesson prosecutor. Thought. Yep. Yeah, the Quintesson prosecutor. Because yeah, the, yeah. So so the way that I see this is that Quintessa is the name of the planet, regardless of you know obviously logically Quint means five whatever, but Quintessa is the name of the planet. They say the name of the planet several times in the movie. They are all Quintessons, just like Earth is the name of our planet, and most humans are all earthlings kind of thing like that's the only logic i can see as to calling them quintesson judge quintesson bailiff quintesson executioner prosecutor scientist etc it's just that's their race i guess i don't know i know it seems very odd <laughs> well it is fiction and it was 1980s fiction so who knows <laughs> So, I mean, this, if you don't have a picture of this guy up, uh, he essentially has like uh, an alien from like the alien movies sort of mm -hmm. head, right? Sort yep. of elongated backwards. Um, and he's got like tentacles for arms. And just like the uh, the five faced Quintesson, he's got like uh, some sort of, I don't know, power booster thing in the bottom so he can float. Yeah, he's got a jet type, yeah, thing. Uh, so that's kind of the <laughs> description of what he looks like. Yeah. Um, but I think. Back in, was it the last episode? Maybe it was the first one um, where I, I thought maybe we would see a Quintesson as a character who pops up and 
here he is. <laughs> so, he is. That's right. <laughs> um, so I guess as a as a character from the Transformers universe, is I mean, is this one that you were happy to see? Is there another character you wish you would have saw? I I I think what what they're doing here, what because the other thing is since we've done the last one, I believe SDCC had happened and they had done a or Maybe we talked about this last time. I don't remember, but they did a uh, the Skybound Transformer panel recap from San Diego Comic Con. I don't remember if we talked about that or not. And the only thing I'm going to bring up here is that um, uh, let's see, Robert Kirkman created giant building blocks for Johnson to work off of story wise. So Kirkman created the building blocks for this, and Johnson is using. I mean, he's a good writer, whatever else, but Kirkman's writing this. So if Kirkman's making the building blocks, I like the small like. If Void Rivals is supposed to be this brand new sci-fi space series that has hints at other things that are happening somewhere else at some point within the Skybound Entertainment new Transformers Energon universe, I'm perfectly fine with that. I like these kind of, like, I don't want to see Derek and Salila come up against Thundercracker or whatever. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to see, I like, I like the way that this is going where you're seeing random bits of, oh, here's a Skuxoid. Skuxoids were from season three, as we talked about last issue. Here's the Quintesson Prosecutor. What the hell is he doing imprisoned with this other, and the funny thing about the Skuxoid is, like it says in this comic, the Skuxoid is only doing it for the money. He's not doing he's not doing it for anything else other right. than to get paid. And if right. he ain't getting paid, then he ain't gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I got so, I got another question for you. Sure. So in the first issue, we saw Jetfire. Yep. In this in issue two, right, we saw the Skuxoid. Still in this one. We saw the Quintesson yep. in this one. We know that the Transformers comic, which is debuting in October. Right. Um, is kind of, uh, I presume, <laughs> based on what we've seen of a preview, is set kind of back in that 1984 time period? Yes. So it is completely set in... Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, I saw, again, it was another panel or another breakdown or whatever. Oh, oh here it is. Uh, yeah, it's basically 1984. Uh, one of the Q&As was the Autobots are navigating this brand new world to them, Earth, for the first time. No plans to tie in other Hasbro properties, visionaries, and humanoids at this time. Clear, what I loved about this, this, this Q&A response, clear separation between what Paramount does with Transformers and what Skybound is doing. Uh, they do have plans to republish older comic content from IDW and Marvel, so there is that. And Skybound, even though they're starting with the 8485 Transformers characters, they are not limited to those with their Transformers co uh, uh, comic. Uh, Kirkman jokes that he wants to get Bulkhead into the comic. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it confirmed anywhere though that the time period? I know they're starting with the eighty four eighty five figures mm -hmm. or characters, but is it confirmed anywhere that the timeline for the comic is actually set in the in the eighties? I don't think so. Because but... what well, my question for you was going to be was okay, we saw Jetfire in the first issue, mm -hmm. and he took off seemingly to go <laughs> somewhere, right? Um, and we've got some other characters that we know from the world of Transformers that we saw in issue two, and then here in issue three. Mm -hmm. um, if if the Transformers series is taking place in the '80s, do you think what we're what we're seeing here within Void Rivals may be a completely different time period, like maybe some point in the future? Like uh, again, we saw Jetfire, but uh, he would crash landed there, had been there for who knows how long. Uh, yeah. Maybe he was there, as, you know, at some point in the future that we will get to within the Transformers comic series. I'm not sure. I really am not sure. I don't remember. If the first two issues, if a date or a year was ever set for Void Rivals, like, I don't, like, it doesn't even say, I mean, we pick up issue three right where issue two left off with them facing off against the Skuxoid. So right. it doesn't really have a previously on, and this is the year 2157 or whatever. Right. And I don't remember the first two issues specifically saying a date of a they year at all. So, nope. yeah, so... I'm going to be an ass here and assume that <laughs> that it is sometime before 1984, 1985. From what I've seen and what I've heard Daniel Warren Johnson talk about, he was on uh, somebody's podcast 
YouTube, whatever, I don't remember. But he did say that it was a 84-85 starting point. So it is after the Autobots and Decepticons leave Cybertron, they crash land. He's basically, he's basically starting a new G1, essentially, with the comic. Okay. I just, thought it'd be I, cool if they did. I just thought it'd be cool if they had like some time shifting where we thought it was taking place at the same time period yeah. and it ended up not being. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I Again, the Void Rivals characters feel to me like they are any other character from like, and I'm only saying this because that's what I remember. Like when the Skuxoid goes into the 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 port in season three, when the Skuxoid is in season three of the cartoon, like all the other species of of peoples that are there, the Skuxoid, the this character, it's like going into the cantina on in, in Star Wars. You have all these right. characters together, and I'm assuming that Derek and and Salila are not characters from the future or the past or whatever timing i'm assuming it's all in the same timeline unless the creators tell us differently so okay I yeah i was just kind of curious what your thoughts on that were yeah i guess so so overall i guess how do you uh, what did you think of this this issue i think it's good i think it's you know comics have this the, this tendency to do maybe one or two issues of story building kind of thing. And then they'll do an issue like this one, number three, where it's mostly there is story building, but it's mostly an action scene. And I don't have a problem with that at all whatsoever, because you need clear separate for me. I need clear separation with story and action. I need, you know, some story and then, Hey, guess what? We're going to go fight this guy or we're going to do this or we're going to do that or whatever. So this being more of an action issue, I like because things are actually happening. Things are actually being done with these characters and they're basically trying to get away from the Skuxoid or whatever they're doing with the Skuxoid here. So I, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's really fun. So I'm, I've uh, sort of a mixed bag on this one. Um, I do like the action. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big action heavy type person. Um, but I feel I felt like overall it didn't really advance the story much, which again, right? I talked about last episode here. Um, when you've only got so many panels, <laughs> we got to wait a month to tell the story. I'm kind of disappointed by that because this right, this is 22 pages, something like that. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I'll talk about something in just a second. Yeah, this is 22 pages um, of of the of the uh, story here. And uh, really, all they did was leave the Skuxoid. <laughs> but and we yeah, learned about a Quintesson. Yes, they okay, but that's two story points. Like you're learning a little bit about the Skuxoid. Like he, like like I've already said, he's made mention of the fact he's only doing this to help his. Fa he's doing the bounty hunting to get f money for f for his wife and kids to be able to eat, kind of thing. He's doing it to survive, kind of thing. So that's one story point. Yeah, this is only 22 pages, but most comics story are 22 pages for single issues. And I think it does a good job of like once they once they free the Quintesson, get on their ship and I'm jumping way ahead here. We kind of have a little bit more of like between Derek and Salila. Oh, come on. How can you be so negative? I don't know about you, but I am. I was pretty sure we'd be dead by now. Uh, you know, so we have some characters here. It's just that the action in this takes over a little bit more. But it, I'm always the one that has problems with, with pacing in comics at times. If things happen that I just don't think should be happening or I just don't get it. I got this pretty easily. It's like, fight the Skuxoid, escape. Oh, wait, before we escape, there's another mysterious voice. And then there's this one-headed tentacle jet firing prosecutor quint okay well so now who can we trust we trust the skuxoid or do we trust the quintesson and blah, blah 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 i don't know i think it worked yeah i just wish the pacing was uh a little bit quicker in terms of like overall story um, yeah so uh last panel here uh -huh. our last page sorry um, mm -hmm. so, uh, Salila seemingly turns on Derek. What do you think is going on there? I do not know, but I can't wait to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, so the lead up to this is right. They're approaching the sacred ring. Sacred ring is split essentially into two, one for each one of their races. Yep. Um, and they're each going to basically go their own separate ways so that they're not landing uh, together in, in one, you know, one side of the ring. Right. Um, and this is when she seemingly turns on him and 
uses some sort of electric zappy power from her staff yeah. <laughs> and knocks him out. Um, I, I'm, so I'm wondering, like, if she's going to sort of take him to her side of the ring as a quote unquote prisoner. I don't know, I guess. Yeah, no, I don't know what's going to happen with with her, why she did the the thing to Derek and what, whether she's taken him prisoner. And hey, so far, they've kept each other alive. Who knows? Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm almost wondering if, if that's kind of what's going to happen. She's going to take him to, to her side. Um, if you go see what page is this on uh again i'm looking at the digital version of the comic me too if you go to page 30 right we get the cover for void rivals number four uh okay. it's someone sitting on some sort of throne there uh, based on the colors i would think it would be uh on salila's half of the ring yeah uh so likely. so I, yeah like i've said i'm almost wondering if she's going to take him there as a sort of quote-unquote prisoner but if you know essentially knocking him out was a kind of sort of a way to kind of help protect him I yeah. think she's still. I think she's ultimately still going to be working with him. They're going to be working together. But I'm wondering if she's just kind of doing this. Uh, I guess for her benefit, when she does take him to her side of the ring, my thoughts would be that he would essentially be a prisoner, but that she would help him, uh, kind of once once they're there. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure, but again, this is an ongoing series, so I can't see yeah. them being <laughs> being uh, foes here. I think they're going to continue to team up as the series goes on. Yeah, I think this this shocking cliffhanger kind of thing is, number one, we're at the third issue. We need to do something besides random, I don't mean random as in to be insulting, but random Transformers guest appearances. We need to do something with these characters. We need to, like was said earlier in the comic, she's not just a pilot, is she? Kind of, like, there's more to, no, I Jesse, damn it. There's more to her than meets the eye. <laughs> God damn it. I was hoping not to have to <laughs> make that reference, but like, and that's the thing is that who knows? Maybe she is doing this to protect him. Maybe she is doing to fit this to what we don't know because she just does it. There is, and that's what I like. She just does it. There is no like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm going to knock you out now. What? <laughs> Like there's right. none of that kind of stuff like it, it, suspense. And I think that's good because sus comics do need suspense, especially if you're starting a brand new title, a brand new universe with these characters specifically, the void rivals characters specifically and whatever their lovely ring is between the two races. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. Uh, so I think that's all I've got here for issue three. Is there anything else you want to bring up? It's a series that I'm invested in to the point of I'm perfectly fine doing it this way. Whereas normally I would be like, no, I'm waiting for the trade. No, I want the whole story at you know at one time. Give you know it's like the old Netflix model, like stream everything all at once, kind of thing. But no, this is this is fun. We figure out a day and date to record these and this is awesome and yeah it's uh hopefully everyone's joining us for these as far as like getting to read the comic for themselves because what comics needs today in my personal opinion is something new and fresh yet familiar and i think that's what void rivals is we were introduced to new characters and new races yet there's a rockeroid or a skuxoid or a, a, a quintesson prosecutor or whatever here and there and everywhere so, yeah, that, that covered issue four. Hmm, I'm real. September 20th can't get here fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> the last, last issue before Transformers number one. Yep. So they're probably, I don't know. Again, I'm being an ass here, assuming things. They're probably going to ramp up a little bit on the Transformers stuff in issue four, but who knows? Yeah, maybe they'll either introduce something Transformers related within that, or maybe they'll give us another more extended preview uh, at the end. I'll have to make sure to check the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I always read to the end of the book, no matter what, just yeah. in case. Yeah. Because I forget stuff. Like, I, I'm like, when you said there was a preview, I'm like, wait a minute, another one? Was there another new one? Am I, because I'm, <laughs> I'm all, Steve and I run a Transformers podcast. There's not, at least out of the news that we pay attention to, there's not many things that we miss. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one from the thing and the whatever. So yeah, no, but this well, is what, lesson learned for me. I'll uh, go to the end. <laughs> next so I guess in closing, there's, there's two things, two other things I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. One's a complaint. Okay. Other than what I just talked about story-wise. 
Uh, this isn't a complaint about about the story, but specifically the letter type uh, okay. for the Quintesson. When I when I'm again I read on digital uh, okay. the digital version of the comic. I have an iPad here. The iPad is roughly uh, at least the size I've got is roughly about the same exact size as a regular comic book. The dimensions okay. are slightly different, but that's about the size. So I don't really do any zooming on the panels or anything. I'm reading it kind of full page, mm-hmm. and at that. Uh, at that view, I had a hard time reading uh, some of the characters uh, for the words for the Quintesson. Okay. Um, like the, <clears throat> excuse me, the A and the R, that was very hard for me to distinguish between a couple uh, a couple of those within the, the words that he was saying. Uh, so I was like, I'm on page, what page am I on here? Page uh, 13. Uh, the Quintesson says, after you have aided in me returning to my ship, and the very first time I was reading that, I'm like, after you have rided me, I'm like, rided me? What <laughs> Because that the A and the R looks very very similar uh, yeah. in in some aspects there, but yeah. So I just as I got to the Quintesson, I had a, a hard time reading some of the text. So that, in that instance, I had to zoom in uh, to read it just because of the way the the characters were. Um, so that's kind of really my complaint uh, about that. But yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is so so far, at least from what I was able to to find on online, uh, this issue has not sold out yet. Like the first two. Yeah. So I don't know what that means for the series going forward. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. Uh, maybe it'll be sold out here within a day or two. But I just I did notice that it has not been sold out yet. Uh, we've not gotten word that it is going to be reprinted yet. Uh, and if it is going to be reprinted, we don't have any uh, pictures of what those uh, covers might look like at this point. Yeah, they'll probably do that a little bit closer to the time. Maybe I don't know. Let's see. I'm because sure. the first two sold out like the same day it was released. Day yeah, or two. Pretty much. Yep. Yep. I'm not sure. I would imagine that if this does sell out and there's a reprint, it's probably going to have the Quintesson on the front. Probably. Most likely. Yeah, I do not see anything here that that says... Yeah, it's just number two. was Number one and number two were the sellouts. Yep. Uh, and I don't think that the... We're quite literally 30 days away from Void Rivals number four and... Really? League of Comic Geeks has a preview already? Well, that doesn't surprise me, but (laughs) hang on. Give me a second here. Uh, Okay, maybe they don't have... Wow, it's just listed there. They don't know. They have the cover? Yeah, they have the cover. They don't have any interiors. Okay, so they've got at least up to issue five on the covers, and the issue five cover is uh, uh, very... um, Hmm... (laughs) So I mean, Image Comics might have this as well, but StadiumComics.com does have the little blurb. It says, The okay. climactic return to the sacred ring. The Energon universe continues here. Thrown before the highest authority for their crimes against the sacred ring, will Derek and Celia's newfound alliance hold strong? Let's hope. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm putting the, uh, the cover for issue five into, the, into our G-chat there. Uh, I'm loving that purple. That's all I can say. <laughs> It yeah, does so, look like he's a prisoner. Yes, he's very <laughs> much a prisoner there. <laughs> All right. So who knows what's going to happen? And, and Dracula lurking in the background in the shadows. Yeah, Dracula, Darth Vader, something like that. Probably not. But uh, well, no, that that guy looks like he's too tall to be a shark to con. He's an Energon vampire. That yeah, that could be. Who knows? I'm still waiting for Energon to be intro like they're calling it the Energon universe. I'm waiting for the actual Energon to be actually introduced. Well, I mean, you said that we saw it in the first issue, right? They yeah, just to it as Energon. They just, yeah, they just never refer <laughs> to it. So, who knows? Yep. yep. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that's that's all I've got. Awesome, awesome, very cool, very cool. Uh, all right, so plugs. What do you got to plug? Uh, let's see. Go over to geekcastria.com. You can check out all of our content there. Uh, we've got 500, and this will be episode 534 for the pull. So we've got 534 episodes of the pullback. We've got 400 and something episodes of all things Transformers. We've got Altered Geek. We've got Cinema Geeks. We've got all kinds of geeks and stuff and all that good stuff. I am still riding out that storm. Before they X everybody out, I am at TF2 and Mike on X. <laughs> uh, I'm on Threads. I think it's TF2 and Mike Presents, which is the same as 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 Facebook. I'm on Blue Sky, but Blue Sky is 
Like, why can't they just have an at name? Why does it have to be TFG and Mike dot blue sky dot this dot? They're like, just have one. Make it simple, stupid. Well, it's because it can be, you can come from it from multiple servers. So you have to identify what server you're on. Right. So you could also, you could even have like your own domain name, for example. Right. So you could have geekcastradio.com. Yeah. So you could have TFG one Mike at geekcastradio.com would be your blue sky oh. name. You just have to set that up. That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's where you can find most of our stuff. All right. Well, you can find me on YouTube, but you're, if you're listening to this or watching this, you're already on my YouTube channel. If you're listening to it, you may be on geekcastradio.com, uh, but you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash matrix underscore prime. Uh, I don't really push out too many, uh, toy reviews anymore. Uh, it's mostly just a hodgepodge of different shit. <laughs> Sometimes it's stuff <laughs> like this. Sometimes it's like how to how to make dill pickles, which is surprisingly one of my highest rated videos. So it's funny you're mentioning your lovely YouTube channel here. I was actually looking at your. I'm like, oh my god, his highest viewed video is like a decade and a half ago at over 2 million views. Yeah. That's the, that's the transformers, the movie 2007 concept Camaro Bumblebee. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. That's still my highest rated, uh, yep. or highest viewed, highest viewed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still occasionally get like, uh, some new comments on there and I'm like, people are still watching. This. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> um yeah so again if you like anything on on my channel there go ahead and uh subscribe uh you can also find me on blue sky i am at jesse j-e-s-s-e early e-a-r-l-e-y at b-s-k-y dot social uh, i started a uh entire transformers feed over there the the network didn't have it i created it it's up there anything you want to find transformers related will show up in that feed blue sky doesn't have uh, hashtags yet but I know that is something they are currently working on. Um, so if you uh, if you go there, you get an account. Uh, if you type any word that's got the uh, word Transformers in it, right? So even if you do hashtag Transformers, it will show up in this feed. Um, so you can follow that feed. Uh, and if you need help finding that, let me know. I can share the link with you. But yeah, again, it shows everything on there. There's there's quite a few. What I find about Blue Sky is that there's uh, quite a few artists that kind of have have moved over to that yep. uh, network and i'm starting to see like a lot of uh, custom artwork for transformers pop up in this feed so very cool very cool it's got a lot of stuff out there i saw you just shared the uh geek cast radio links on there i've got to go yep. ahead and like those yet but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, i saw you that you did share those out there so um yeah again you can find me on blue skies so i think that's it i think that's it too all right, so uh, till next time when we'll be look, taking a look at issue four. Again, the last issue before Transformers number one. Uh, all right, so I think that's it. Till next time, this is Jesse signing off. This is Mike. Catch you later.